Eric Keller here with Enthusiast Auto Group. Today we're in EAG's Paint Correction and Photo Studio and we're going to tell another BMW enthusiast story, a chronicle if you will, about this very cool and special, very unique 318iS built in 1991. And uh, you know, these cars have a really interesting story to tell and when you have all the history on it, it, it does certainly make it that much more special and unique. And the memories that this car has created for so many other enthusiasts is kind of going to be the highlight of, of this video. We're going to talk about the history of the car. We're going to talk about what makes this car cool. We're going to talk about the EAG rejuve process, what's gone into the car. We're going to talk about the driving dynamics. And last, we're going to talk about the market. Uh, this is also going to be another little teaser video since we have seven more cars in EAG's studio here that are awaiting photos and three more that are also departing. So there's going to be uh, quite a lot of uh, information in this video. So uh, stay tuned and we're going to maybe knock through, walk through the uh, uh, cars coming to market briefly first and then we're going to come back to the, the very special E30. Uh, this is a jet black 2013 M3 competition package, quite low mileage, uh, quite light on options, and uh, has just hit the market. This is a dual clutch transmission car. Uh, check the website out for more details on that. Um, another E92 that is even lower mileage with a whopping 30, almost 600 miles. Uh, I just had the pleasure of driving this car almost 900 miles back from Florida. This is a six-speed car that has clear rubber on the front end, and I'm very glad and uh, proud to say that I, I, I don't uh, see any patina or well-earned uh, marks uh, uh, having done that uh, one day super trip. Uh, good to avoid the airports and it was a really good time to, to clear the mind and uh, have some great fun seat time going through the Smokies. This car is not far off in mileage. It's a 2007 black sapphire metallic with a whopping 5,000 miles. Uh, this is the first time for this two owner car to go through EAG's program. More details on the website coming soon. This is another 2007 Z4M coupe on the other side of the mileage spectrum with 60,000 miles. And it has uh, gone through EAG's program now for a second time. This we purchased from the first owner several years ago, sold it to a, a client that just traded, in on, traded it in on another EAG BMW. Behind it, yet another Lime Rock that I've actually been quite enjoying uh, here lately. Uh, this has been a, a this is a DCT M3 with a, just a couple enthusiast-oriented upgrades on it that uh, we'll probably keep on for the next guy. It's got the black grills, uh, front uh, splitter, uh, different diffuser here in the rear. Uh, this is a 52,000 mile car, uh, a little bit out of the norm for EAG, but one that certainly has been cared for and loved by a, a, a pair of California owners. Uh, next to me here on my left is another E28 M5 that we actually purchased from the original owner. I think this car is going to get its own enthusiast uh, BMW Chronicle, so I'll, I'll kind of save some more of that information uh, for that video, but we've just uh, completed the paint correction on this car. I mean, it's amazing to have all of the history on the thing since new and have just the, the one owner. Uh, another E28 M5 going through the paint correction process, and when those paint corrections are done, they look like this. This is a delivery for tomorrow going to a new home. This is a 20,000 mile E46 M3 comp. The paint corrections take a long time. We've got a really great team. We've partnered with Esoteric Detailing many years ago. Really cool, exciting video uh, we'll be working on with them uh, here over uh, the next coming weeks with two very special cars. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe uh, to the channel if you've not already because we've got some really significant cars coming to market that we're quite excited about. Some stuff that really has never seen the North American market. Um, so uh, that's certainly going to be exciting. Uh, but back to the paint corrections, it's a very laborious process that is uh, not for the faint of heart, and especially when you're dealing with original paint, uh, just as we have on the 318 IS up there. It's important to do it once and do it right and take your time. And so uh, uh, lastly, another E46 M3 that is leaving here next week, going by truck to a new home in Charlotte. Uh, this car is going to be used uh, almost as a daily driver, which certainly can be done with any EAG BMW now that it's gone through the program. And had all of its updates done and, and work invested, uh, basically front loading that investment for the next owner, but uh, more on that later. This car is really special. It, it's had a lot of memories made in the car and uh, actually I'm quite excited uh, having just shared uh, a lot of really cool and made a lot of cool memories in this car with a couple friends down in Florida. Uh, this car uh, was sold by us most recently to an owner in Fernandina Beach, which is uh, there right by Amelia Island. And I used the car during the last uh, auctions here over the last week and put a fair amount of miles uh, going around all the different events and uh, actually took another friend out for a fun 
fun ride and uh, went actually on the beach and decided, uh, you know, what do you do? And let me just slip IS on the beach. Well, you do donuts. And uh, we ended up getting stuck. But a lot of fun and uh, certainly something I uh, uh, enjoyed. Needed to have a little break from work and, and uh, you know, do li live the, the hobby for once. Uh, well, not once, but uh, once in, in uh, the spring. Uh, this window sticker is pretty cool. We don't see too many E30 window stickers. $22,635. Uh, performance BMW in Chapel Hill. The first owner of this car was in North Carolina and it spent its entire life there. I actually got the story uh, mixed up on this car with a different 318 IS that we had um, when I was down there, but I, I went through everything and straightened myself out because, uh, well, the history book uh, I had not yet gone through and I did just go through that here today. We've got even the carbon copy of the other window sticker, uh, or, well, the back side of the, the front one there. and. Uh, a nice handwritten ledger of all of the service uh, by not only the first but also the second and the third owner. Even a letter from North America going to, the, to uh, Miss Vic, the first owner. And she bought the car new and was really, really quite content with the car. Uh, kept every piece of paperwork all the way back to the 1200 mile break in service, which is this very first record um, right here on the left. Uh, some articles uh, from different 318s and E30s, and then just everything on the car since new. Uh, we don't get that very often, and this car has just a shade under 67,000 miles now. Uh, definitely had a lot of fun uh, putting another couple hundred miles on the car uh, down to Florida, and it has a couple tasteful updates that we've done for the most recent owners. So the first owner then had it up until about 60 or uh, I think it was like 60, 61,000 miles. The second owner we sold the car to, which this is an all original paint and panels car too, just uh, while we're looking at that Vintag. The second owner was in Washington State and he was quite the enthusiast, had a lot of E30 experience, had a lot of, um, he had a long checklist of things that he wanted to go through on this car and, and quite a few things that he had had to replace on other E30s he'd owned previously. He just went ahead and had us go ahead and update before the car left. It was I mean, even above and, and beyond the, the uh, protocol of the standard EAG rejuve program at the time. And uh, from there it went, uh, so we bought the car back several years later, um, uh, brand new 15 inch wheels were added, uh, EAG went through and did a full suspension refresh and we found another really cool home, a, a dual home actually, the one uh, house in Macon, Georgia, the other there in Amelia Island. And Frank, uh, Frank uh, most recently um, traded the car into us on an E30 M3, but he also made a, a lot of great memories, there's the stock radio, uh, with this car. And I actually hung out with him on the show field uh, during Amelia Island last year when he showed this 318IS as we were picking up another 318IS that we had bought back from a client down there. And so the two nicest E30 M or E30 318s that we'd historically ever sold are now here on that show field and actually spend a lot of quality time with Frank just uh, last week at uh, a couple different uh, events uh, during the, the Concours weekend. And you know the, those memories and those relationships are you know, definitely a big part of the hobby. And it's why so many of us do this and gravitate towards you know, uh, Concours events and cars and coffee events and just uh, you know, sharing these cars with others because that's really what it's all about. And the drive, uh, you know, this car drives fantastic. It really is tight. Uh, everything that could be replaced on the car that needs to be from a consumable or age-based component has been done. Profile gasket, water pump, thermostat, radiator, um, head gasket even we did uh, here uh, a couple years ago. Everything on the car works 100% AC and uh, it's just original to the, the most, um, well, uh, highest degree I would say uh, the amount of cosmoline in this engine bay it almost I mean some people would look at this and say wow that's really ugly uh, whereas others are going to say wow that is massively original and <laughs> I joke that you know the guy that was putting the cosmoline on this car must have been towards the end of the run and he had a lot of material left and uh, his boss probably told him to not have any material left by the time that he was done with those five or ten cars and he put about five or ten cars worth of material on this thing uh, it is uh, definitely cosmoline heavy uh, everywhere and that's this um, you know greenish almost yellow uh, almost sticky uh, stuff that we see that all the the dirt and debris is kind of stuck to and you know they're only original once and, and definitely seeing all the bolts and knowing that they've never been turned 
Um, while it's probably not the most visually appealing, it certainly is honest. And, and for a preservation car like this, uh, with a preservation company like ours, uh, you know, we kind of feel that's that's pretty important. I, I think that's certainly something that's very cool about this car and, and unique to it that uh, we won't see with many of the other E30s uh, these days is a lot of that stuff has been cleaned off or worn off. And this is obviously not that car. Uh, the other thing I think that makes this car cool is we did put just a slightly more modern suspension on the car. And so the handling and driving dynamics are a little bit more modern, a little bit fresh, uh, more fresh and, and tight. Uh, it's a very tidy driving car. And uh, another uh, nice thing that uh, Frank added to the car was a performance chip, which really gave this little thing a, a, a bit of a bite. The 318s are definitely not known for their power, but they are known for their very lightweight driving characteristics and tossability, which certainly makes driving an E30 like this super fun. Uh, you can drive every ounce of the car and drive it hard, and it just really gives you massive amounts of feedback and visceral um, uh, inputs, uh, uh, or excuse me, not inputs, but outputs um, to your inputs. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard car to, to relate the modern cars to because it's just so, um, so raw. And it's a great car to teach kids to drive on. And that actually uh, was how the car kind of came to us um, from the first owner. A really cool enthusiast in North Carolina found the car and he worked with BMW and had a lot of cool BMWs over the years. And, and uh, he knew the car was really special and bought it to share with his sons and, and uh, had a couple of E30s. And uh, he got the car home and the car was just so nice and so fresh that he honestly felt guilty um, you know, putting it in the hands of his younger kids and, and called us up and uh, sold us the car. And, and uh, you know, we told him we were going to make sure we found a really great home for it. And, and uh, we certainly have done that now twice. Um, the European Triangle and Jack and all that stuff there you saw the VIN tag at the top of the, the trunk there you know full toolkit with actually a couple extra things I noticed when we were um, traveling it's got a, a wheel lock and um, a couple extra screws for the license plate bracket and um, uh, it's just a really fun little car to, to boogie around in it's super reliable at this point uh, I actually planned on driving the car back home from Florida until we uh, ended up with this Lime Rock here behind me six speed Figured that would be a pretty cool experience to drive that through the, the Smoky Mountains um, at kind of full clip um, on off peak hours. And so a lot more memories made in, in that special car. Um, so the, uh, the rejuve stuff that we've done to the car, uh, there's I'm sure somewhere between twelve and $14,000 of, of EAG investment over the three times now. Uh, we've not had a chance to PPI the car coming literally straight off the truck from Florida. We got all the sand <laughs> out of the interior and um, I cleaned it up uh, just quickly to get it on the, the, the photo studio table and um, uh, run it that through. Uh, next, those are the photo sheets here that you see on the windshields of, of these cars and just kind of identifying the couple little blemishes so that our photographer certainly can take, capture each one of those condition related photos for the next uh, enthusiast owner knowing they're going to be buying the car basically on our reputation and, and full disclosure and the, the really graphic photos that we consistently take showing every little imperfection down to the little stone chip that uh, I think I might have picked up along the way. But, um, you know, that's the best part of it, and, you know, the car's better for it. We'll touch that up uh, before the car goes around the table here later this weekend. And, um, you know, it, it's just a really honest car, and that's, that's certainly uh, what I think is, is very, very cool about this thing. Um, so uh, the, the market, uh, the E30 market has been quite um, active. It's a very, very popular market. Uh, when we did the uh, Haggerty um, five BMWs to watch panel down at Oktoberfest this past fall, you know the E30, just the general E30 chassis was was uh, something that the committee uh, selected to uh, to talk about, and Haggerty's data had certainly reflected a, a pretty good value trend um, increase over the last couple of years that uh, allowed that car to be uh, on that five BMWs watch list. And, uh, you know, I think the values have certainly normalized a bit. A lot of the mid-level stuff um, and kind of resto mod stuff is, um, you know, kind of hit or miss. Some stuff really sells really strong. Some stuff uh, doesn't. Uh, I think the old adage is very true. You will get what you pay for. And, uh, you know, this being an all original survivor car that's, you know, for the most part stock and where it's not, it's better. Um, a fully documented car, a fully original car with original panels, original paint, uh, find another one. Um, they just, you know, they're, 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 they, don't, they don't come like this very often. Uh, 91 was an, a one-year model only for the 318 IS in our North American market. It is the shorter, slimmer plastic bumpers that uh, arguably a bit more attractive than most of the other bumpers uh, available. 
A few part people would probably argue that. I, I certainly would uh, go on the camp that the, the plastic bumpers are my personal favorite. Um, and and uh, the, uh, this car, price-wise, we're going to be targeting $35,000. It's 34990 We have another black one with 36,000 miles that we have priced at 39990 And that's going to be the top of the market. There's not many uh, E30s that are non-M3s that have sold in that type of rarefied air. Uh, but this is you know, definitely a top 1% level car, as is the other Diamond Schwartz that we also originally acquired from the first owner. Uh, those are, are you know, both uh, very, very significant cars, and, and there's really not many chances when you can buy new for a second time in life, especially with this car being you know, now 29 years of age. So uh, I think that's a, a pretty good little one take for this BMW Enthusiast Chronicle. Uh, this is certainly a, a fantastic car that I really had a lot of fun with in Florida and, and certainly made a lot of fun memories with a lot of friends, um, uh, both uh, uh, domestically and some friends from abroad as well. Uh, it certainly impressed everybody that uh, had the experience, especially doing some fun little donuts there on the beach. But uh, if you are interested in any of these new arrivals, do stay tuned to the website. Again, this 2013 M3 Comp is now live on the site. The six-speed Lime Rock with 3,500 miles, 3,600 miles is not yet live. Uh, the gray Z4M Coupe is live. The 5,000-mile Z4M Coupe is not live. Uh, the 52,000-mile DCT uh, Lime Rock is not live. And these e two E28 M5s are not live. And, and uh, I think I might have skipped over this one a bit. Uh, this is a 107,000-mile car that we actually acquired a number of years ago and just have been so busy with other projects and customer cars that uh, us being our own best customer sometimes has some consequences and we have to put our other customer cars first and so uh, we have now uh, completed the rejuve on the car. I think this car will also get a nice little video once it's all done. Uh, Wes and Ranger here have been just kicking butt uh, working for several weeks on both these E2, uh, E28s and, and the, you know, I think the finished product especially for you know original cars that are 32 years old speaks for themselves. This is a really nice finish especially for this type of mileage. Uh, they just don't come around like that often and certainly is um, a, a pretty interesting and hot market. The E28s made a lot of memories uh, for a lot of enthusiasts. And you can kind of see there the, the side that we've not yet corrected relative to what the other one we just finished uh, panning over does look like. A uh, really big difference uh, once we go through and do each of these steps. Wes, how many steps did you do on this car? How many steps are you doing on this car? Five steps. Interiors all disassembled cleaned up, leather conditioned. We'll be snapping everything back together here soon and, and uh, just ensuring that uh, all of the, the uh, quality is, is there to be enjoyed by the next guy. Um, again, another fully documented car uh, with a crack-free dash. But again, more on that stuff later. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe for more. If you're interested in any of these cars, do drop us a line. Uh, we'd be happy to have a conversation with you and send you the full data file once it is compiled and ready to share. Thanks for tuning in.